Here we are again. This is Kevin Johnson of Leverage Consulting, and you are listening to the Resilient Entrepreneur Podcast number 24. So today's is one that will likely hit home or might even be a punch to the gut for a few of you. This one is all about, I have to do it all myself. And this is one that I see with clients. I see it with friends, family, and others that at times this can really get in the way and actually become a real problem. And I know for some of you, you're probably already rolling your eyes and thinking of all kinds of scenarios where you have to do it yourself. And it can be anything from feeling like you need to go clean your kid's room because they won't do it. Or you might be thinking about someone who is a coworker, a teammate, an outside vendor that you have to go do their job because they won't do it. And one question I want to ask you is in those scenarios when you are compelled to go do someone else's job or go do the job is who suffers in that situation? And I wish I had the, the, uh, the, the Alex Trebek timer here, but I don't have that sound effect. So we'll just let me talking be the moment for you to think about that for a second. But again, the question is, who suffers in that scenario? And this may sound odd, but the, there are two people that suffer in that scenario, and it is you and the other person for whom you are doing their job. And let's start with the other person first, because if you're doing someone else's job, then what do you think is happening with them? Well, number one, you're teaching them at some point, I don't really need to do my job because ultimately the other person is going to come do it, other person being you. So you're teaching them at some point you're going to come rip it out of their hands and do it yourself. You're teaching them that no one else can do it as good as you. And we don't need that. And for those of you who have jobs where you you know we rely on one another and it's not even a, a owner or manager proposition at times, we could be talking about medical and dental practices where our front desk team uh, sets up the schedule and then the, the doctor or the, and the nurses or assistants are running the schedule. Even that alone, you know, we, we don't want the clinical team going up front and doing the administrative team's job. That's, that's just absurd. And obviously we can't have the reverse happening either. But there are scenarios where I see that happen. There are scenarios where I see people in other professions doing someone else's job. And ultimately, you're teaching them that, that no one can do it as good as you. And, and we need, it may not be 100% all the time, but let's just say if it was at least 80% consistently, then it leverages you to be able to move on and go do other things. So we're, we're teaching them you're ultimately going to come do it anyway. We're teaching them that no one can do it as good as you. And ultimately, we're also teaching them that maybe we don't even want them doing that job. And I could go on to some other things, but those are three primary things I tend to see. So that person gets frustrated and that person starts giving up or they just step aside because at some point they know they're going to get steamrolled by you. So let's talk about you for a moment and we talk about the, you know, what compels us to do it and some of the some of the things that happen as a result of that. So you may as I'm as I'm talking through this, you may think, well there are scenarios where I have to do it. There are scenarios where I have to jump in and I I wouldn't disagree with you at all. There are situations. But the real question is, is this a chronic problem? And when I say chronic, I mean, if we look at a body of work, if we look at a span of time, are you consistently jumping in and doing someone else's job? Because guess what? In that scenario, you're probably not doing your job very well. Most all of us have enough on our plate already, and we don't need to do someone else's job too. So that creates a problem for you and the performance that you do within your job. It also creates an adversarial or an uncomfortable relationship with the other person. And quite honestly, over time, it's going to start affecting 
your attitude, and it's going to start affecting your future. It's not about these one-time events. It is about a span of time. It is the culmination of a series of events. Because if we continually do it, then we start going home in a, with a bad attitude. And then it might affect what goes on at home. And then when we decide to get in the car and come to work again tomorrow, then it may start affecting us there as well. So even if we start dreading going to work because now I have to do his job or her job. So it starts affecting us there. And then ultimately it starts affecting your future. And it affects your future because your attitude could be poor. It's, it is something where you may feel like you hide it well, but no one is that good. There are people who are better than others, but ultimately it's going to show. So when it starts showing, then it affects our relationship with our coworkers. It's going to start showing to our customers, our patients, our clients. So it starts affecting us there. And ultimately, whether you work for yourself or you draw a paycheck, it's going to start affecting your compensation. And if it affects your compensation, then it affects your ability to go on vacations, retire, or other things. So ultimately, you need to find a way to break the pattern. And that's really what it comes down to, is we need to find a way to break the pattern. And it's going to start with you. It will start with you by finding a way to address a a system to where you're not feeling compelled to jump in and do someone else's job. It may also require training. And the training is something, and I could give numerous examples, but the reality, I mean, they're, they're just endless It could be as simple as teaching someone how to use a piece of technology so you don't have to do their job for them. It could be as simple as teaching someone else how to process or problem solve like you do. And if you're able to do that, then that, again, leverages you so you can go do your job. And this, again, will come down to figuring out when this is going to become a priority for you. I mean, hopefully maybe this will spark something within some of you and you schedule a team meeting training or something of the sort. You schedule a one-on-one with someone and at least start there. And if you, and a little, little pro tip here, if we make it about the system and avoid the emotional response to things or avoid the emotional outburst, if you will, of calling, you know, kind of going at someone as if they're lazy or going at them as if they have zero work ethic or those kinds of things. And we address it from more of a systems-based type uh, approach. You're more likely to get the response or the, the outcome that you're looking for. So as I said, this might be a little bit of a punch to the gut or it might hit home for some of you. But the reality of it is this is this is huge for a lot of people. This is something that until you choose to make a real change, it's going to continue to be the same. So find the problem, find your your solution or your way, and just make sure that you continue to move the needle with this because it's not going to be an overnight fix. But when you do fix it, it is one of the most freeing things. It's one of those things when you re- start to get... A life back when you start to you start looking at things more positively it's absolutely amazing what it does for you your team your future and your family so that my friends is the resilient entrepreneur podcast number 24 i'll be talking to you again very very soon because i got more really good stuff coming up shortly